Hello everyone, before we start today's video, if you could all do me a solid and lightly tap the like button, perhaps share the video about and leave a comment. If you are not subscribed, subscribe as well. It would greatly help this channel. Thank you very much. Isn't this just fantastic? Captain's Log, Subdates 22062.4.3 Waiting for a movement beyond the continual bowel variety is excruciating, so I've decided to take the shuttle pod and capture some stragglers for scientific tests of the electrical variety. Hello everyone, welcome to This Week at Twitter! Or twat. Today we're going to start from a tweet from Keemstar. Everyone has a gun at school. Accompanying the tweet is a video from Insight where they discuss schools in New Mexico where all the teachers, priests, security all carry a 45, which I believe is some form of pew pew device. Reply, imagine thinking a handgun can outgun an AR-15 though. Now this tweet's a bit baity. On one hand, they have a point. It doesn't outgun it, does it? if you're playing Call of Duty. It's also baity because now you're getting people to start a discussion on AR-15s and handguns, aren't you? That's a deflection from the original topic. The topic of the video was that teachers are armed so they can protect the students in case anyone tries. A deterrent, as it were, right? Whether it's effective or not, I'm not entirely sure. I guess we'll have to wait and see with regards to New Mexico. This same person, N. Vader, replied to so many people when they poked holes at their logic, constantly, constantly talking about the size of the gun, the high capacity ammo, and then dunking on teachers by making it seem as if because they're a teacher, they don't know how to fire a firearm and are ineffective, compared to the person who's got the AR-15 and attacking the school, who is of course, a marksman. From the replies alone, I got the distinct impression that N. Vader is less a gun enthusiast and more someone that plays Warzone. Not competitively, because they no doubt suck at it. But their go-to is clearly the AR-15, because in that game it's OP, right? <laughs> I retweeted M. Vader with the following. While not a gun person, surely this mentality has too many flaws. And many people replied to me, pointing out that Actually, yeah, this is fairly flawed. With Don the Pleb pointing out, you didn't know that you become immune to handgun rounds the moment you pick up an AR-15? You just click it over to safe and it turns on the AR field. That stops all incoming rounds moving slower than 1500 FPS. Others also pointing out it entirely depends on the circumstance. It really does, context matters. Where some have spoken about the recoil on an AR, others have pointed out that with buffer springs, the recoil is negligible. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. Again, I'm English. We don't have them here. We have Nerf guns and Spud guns. Because we, we prefer swords. I think the intention behind the tweet from Envader was solely done to bait for the responses. And that's understandable because the amount of traffic that Envader has got is considerable. All from one tweet. And the amount of replies was quite something. As a final point, I guess, it doesn't matter how many you fire, because ultimately only one actually matters. If you can make one count, the size of the magazine means very little. Oh look, a comment on whether size matters. Interesting. Rarely in my time on Twitter have I ever interacted with anyone that could be considered a form of stan. This is important, because very recently I actually encountered this. For this we insert Lewis Hamilton, a seven-time Formula One world champion. Whether he's actually any good, that's up to everyone else to decide and for history to decide when he eventually retires. Having won seven world titles does not mean he is any good, it just means, and it is accurate, his team held a monopoly for a considerable amount of time. Recently, Sir Lewis Hamilton gave an interview to Sky Sports because he finally got a podium this season. Mercedes had a bit of a slow start. During that interview, I heard some things that I can't play, but I'll link the tweet down below in the pinned comment with all the sources. It was an accent that wasn't his. And so I tweeted out one word. One. The word was simply accent. Replies. What is accent got to do with you? Yes, we all have them. Rolling eye emoji. And? But my favourite one. Over one word. When you're in a foreign place, speak like them. 
because if you use your own slang, they may have difficulty understanding you, personal experience. So don't act smart like you know everything. That was for me, by the way. Over one word. I was not seeking ill intent, nor was I trying to stoke any flames of mockery. But it turns out, on all their profiles, they have a number 44 and are big fans of Lewis Hamilton. One bleeding word was all it took for you to come out in force, and the reason I mentioned it was because, in the UK, many of our managers have gone from football, that is, to other countries, and then given interviews after a few months and sounded like they are in that area, which we in the UK mock, because it turns out, we like to bully each other. It's in our nature. And the fact you idiots got so triggered over one word speaks volumes about how sensitive you are. I've never had to deal with idiots like you before, so I gave you all very polite responses. And some of you did not understand it is very much a cultural thing. One of you dipshits was American and just didn't understand it. How could you? Because everything's great because America, right? Lewis Hamilton is not American, he's not going to sleep with you, he is English, and I am well within my rights as an Englishman to bully a fellow Englishman. Which I didn't do in the first place, I merely asked a question because I thought my ears had deceived me. So I put out a follow-up tweet. LOL, the stands that pounce on me over a one-word tweet, you couldn't be any more precious. It's just a question, not some hate-inspired attack on your favourite driver. Have a biscuit and calm your tits. I guess what makes it interesting is, there were more responses to my original tweet and someone has gone and deleted them. Oops, you guys are special. I know this because I responded to all of you, politely, courteously. And you think I was being smart when I simply wrote, accent? Tell me you have a pathetic existence and exist solely on Twitter without telling me you have a pathetic existence and exist solely on Twitter. To Stan Lewis Hamilton, who's going to retire in a year or two anyway. You're embarrassing. Almost as embarrassing as Nick Fuentes, and I have to talk about him now. You're all welcome. While Nick Fuentes is transitioning from talking about YouTube drama commentary to focus instead his priority, that being to America first, it doesn't mean we can't just occasionally drop the occasional dumb comment he makes because it's quite amusing. For someone that prioritizes America first, he has some rather interesting perspectives. And it certainly tickles me because whenever I hear about America first, I usually think of traditional values. Which could well be wrong because I guess when I hear someone say the following... Why people call me gay because I've never had a girlfriend? I think if anything, if anything, it makes me less gay. If anything, it makes me not gay. <laughs> As opposed to less gay, not that there's any gay, but it makes me not gay. Well, because think about it this way. You know, a gay person, gay people do date girls all the time. Real. And when I said on Elijah Schaefer's show, and they said, have you ever been in a romantic relationship? Have you ever had sex with a girl? And I said, no. If you name searched me on Twitter, as I always do, all these gay people are coming out and saying, I've had more girlfriends than Nick. I've, I've had sex with more girls than Nick. So like I said last week, not only is, not only is that thinking flawed, but actually it's the reverse. That actually makes me really more heterosexual than anybody. If, if we're being, if we're really being honest. It seems at odds with what I had thought America First was. Then again, having sex with women is gay is a rather interesting comment to make at the best of times. And just in case anyone thinks those quotes are old, they're from 2022. It's current year argumentation from somebody who isn't even the most popular person on his own platform. A platform that makes no money and is a literal sinkhole. Someone who sits there for content and will play copyrighted music while having to abide certain laws that prevent him from doing it to essentially do nothing. A lot of his viewers tickle me as well because they come across as incel twinks and I get the distinct impression they're okay with it. <laughs> How's that distancing oneself from Ethan Ralph working out for you? To the final tweet of the day, we're going to look at my feminist dream at Peggy Sanderson 1. The attempt to imitate the success of Marvel is sad at this point. Accompanying it are two pictures, one of Brie Larson's Carol Danvers and the other Maverick, Top Gun. With the release of the now much celebrated Maverick Top Gun sequel movie, this kind of tweet seems quite amusing, especially as Top Gun 
came out before Captain Marvel. However, this is not where the issues I have are with this. Some have retweeted the image with laughing emojis, some saying my feminist dreams should stick to dreams. Others pointing out though, and this is where I have the issues with it. It's funny how this tweet doesn't exist and Peggy Sanderson 1 isn't a real account. Many have gone through this tweet to try and decide whether or not it is in fact a real tweet. And I'm not convinced. On a lot of tweets, you will see what device the person who has tweeted has used. In this we see nothing. In a lot of tweets, the profile picture is not usually as squished as it is in this instance. When images are squished like that, it's because someone has stretched the image to do that. If someone has just Google downloaded something, it's not going to squish like that when you make your profile picture. Which leads me to believe that this tweet, much like Envaders from earlier, is intentional bait. I've seen a lot of people tweeting at Peggy Sanderson but nothing crop up. I've seen a lot of people tag My Feminist Dream with an image of the tweet but there is no account called this anywhere. If people are so quick on this, someone would have nabbed it a lot faster, which has led me to be a bit more skeptical of whether or not it is in fact real or not. Now as we have reached the end of the video, I would like to promote something. Firstly, there is a new video on Moisky Reads tonight at 8pm. It will be another poem by John Cooper Clark. If you're interested in narration, story, poetry kind of content, that's the channel for you. Second, I'm attempting to finish my log cabin. To do so, I'm using Kofi as a form of fundraiser. If you would like to help me do so, please consider supporting me over there as I try and acquire the solar panels and batteries to do this. Thank you.